Welcome back to Elam.life. Today I'm going to try and deal with the frustration that I've had with this trailer since the day we bought it. It comes with this Polk PA4A Marine uh, stereo receiver and we've had trouble from day one. Primarily we use our cell phones for our music and it's supposed to have Bluetooth connectivity. And I think we've been able to get it to connect maybe three or four times, and then it's just quit. And we've gone through all the procedures that the uh, manufacturers requested us to do. It's still covered under warranty, but it's just an ugly system. I'm gonna change it out to this Garmin Fusion device. Uh, much better, uh, full color display on it, uh, does Apple CarPlay as well as connecting to the stereo, the uh, TV, the DVD player, much better system. I've gone ahead and done a little bit of experimenting and basically to remove this, this is just the control head. This is not the actual stereo. The actual stereo is up in, inside here, but the Garmin is gonna mount in this hole. From the mounting plate to the wall, I have four and a half inches. And on the Garmin, four and a half inches will give me plenty of room for the cabling before it hits the back of the access wall. Okay, where the cabinet door closes, we have just slightly less than an inch. When I measure from the back through the front of the knob, it should just clear. Maybe not with the cover on it, but the cabinet should clear. One of the first issues that we have to deal with is the width of the slot. Now the slot that's there is big enough to basically swallow the entire radio. So that means the lower edge of this and the upper edge are gonna to have to go right exactly on the uh, lower and upper edge of the faceplate here. And then we're, we're gonna to have to cut out a notch here and a notch here. I have a template. They printed it out and I've cut a line right here. That has to line up with the bottom of the slot and it's gotta be parallel with this because I can't have these two devices cockeyed. And then this line is gonna be the edge of the radio and that needs to line up with this one. So we're gonna tape that using painter's tape and we'll line it up exactly where it needs to go. And then we'll take a magic marker, draw our line and then cut it I'm not sure if we'll use a roto tool or a saber saw. Saber saw would be easiest or a jigsaw. I'm just not sure I have enough room to get it in and manipulate it without impacting any of these other devices. First off, I'm gonna get this template taped up. Using the template, we got that marked and you can see the areas that we're gonna have to cut in order to make this fit. So let's go get the cutting tools. I believe we can get the uh, jigsaw in there and able to cut everything. I'm gonna cover this with a sheet of paper so I don't scratch that. The jigsaw does have a, a piece of a plastic protector on it, so I'm not too worried about scratching the wood, but such tight corners, I don't see that there's any way that I'm going to be able to film this and get the jigsaw in there and get myself in there. So I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera and I'll be back in just a moment. All right, we're back. Got the, the hole neatly cut out and uh, here's the fusion radio that's going to fit right in that notch, hopefully. Perfect fit. Put the little trim plates on here, and I think it's gonna work pretty good. So next step, we need to get the wiring harness uh, fixed, and that's up in here. We've already uh, kind of gutted this. Uh, I had to remove three screws, two on that side, one in front, 
We have our progressive industries power minder mounted here. We're going to keep that since we're mounting the stereo on the wall over there. We do not have to cut this portion out. So I went ahead and released this. This is the uh, USB plug-in, which we're going to reuse on the new stereo. And it's pretty tight if we stretch that wire over to the radio. So we may actually have to create some jumpers. So I'll have to sort through this and we'll get it going. Back in a few. Whew, it's a hot one. We just finished up the snap pad installation outside. And before we call it a quits for the day, I've got one more thing to do on this. We're not anywhere near finished, but I found that I, I'm not real happy with this. If you take a look at this very carefully, you can see right along there and perhaps up on top as well. I was hoping that you wouldn't be able to see as much of that gap as what you do, but there is that gap there. So today we're going to take care of that. We'll need to come back and fill in these uh, screw holes with the caulk as well. Right now I just want to get the uh, lines taken care of. basically just ran a small bead of cloth, uh, caulk right up against that tape. And what that's going to do is we're going to let that caulk set. It will not stick to the tape. So we'll pull the tape off probably tomorrow or the day after. And then that'll give us a nice uh, solid yet soft uh, connection to cover that gap that I wasn't real happy about. Okay, we're back after a long break. Sorry, got sidetracked on some other important th projects. But we need to get back on this one because it's gonna be about a week and then we're gonna be traveling again and I need this stereo. I don't need it. I want this stereo to be in functioning condition when we go. When you put the uh, stereo back in, The only thing you really see at this point are the old screw holes. And if you're not looking for those, I don't think you're going to see them at all. If they do start annoying me, I'll just go in with some touch up paint. Uh, I filled the holes with caulk, so that should uh, take care of a lot of the problem. But let's go ahead and get the harness hooked back up. Need the handy dandy grabber open this up without hitting the camera. Okay, we've got uh, the stereo mounted. We've got uh, the wiring harness uh, kind of straightened out here. And so these two wires right here are going to, well, well here, <coughs> going to what will be the DVD holder here. We haven't mounted that yet, but it's coming. This is the zone four output which is going to be going to this small uh, transmitter, Bluetooth transmitter. This will allow Margaret to be able to listen to the stereo on her earbuds at a much higher level than is pleasant for everybody else because she's deaf. So we're going to get that taken care of. Now, this is something I wanted to show you. This is a small uh, ubiquity switch that we're going to be using to get hardwired access to everybody. This line will be for the DVD. This we've installed for the TV. 
And this line right here is the uh, stereo. Now this does have the capability of being uh, PoE, power over ethernet powered from the router up at the front of the trailer. However, the router at the front of the trailer is on all the time unless I turn it off with the key. If I turn the battery off or the, the trailer power off, I want this router to turn off because its purpose is just for the entertainment. It's not for the uh, remote access. So I'm not going to use the power over ethernet. Instead, what we've decided is that there is this extra wire up here that was made for the splitter, which is this device right here. However, they did not power it off of that uh, because this is 12 volts and the splitter they installed required five volts. So instead they chose to actually occupy one of the plugs up here with a five volt power supply. Instead, what we've done is purchase this small uh, 12 volt to five volt converter. And then we've created a specialized harness here. And we're going to power all three devices. We're gonna power the splitter, we're gonna power the ethernet, and we're also going to power the Bluetooth transmitter all off of this line right here. So I've gotta go ahead and snip these ends, put some spade lugs on so that I can connect it up to here, and then we'll plug everything in and make sure it works. And then the only other thing we have to do after that is route the ethernet line from the front of the trailer. That should be kind of fun. So we'll get to it. We've got it going, uh, both the TV and the stereo are using ethernet right now. And if you look right here, you can see the ethernet lights flashing. This is the main feed and then the white one and the black one are both the uh, TV and the stereo. So basically, we're feeding the, the feed down through the hole, it goes down in the wall, and hopefully you can see this. Down under there, there's the white cable, it goes inside the heating vent behind this seat, and then around this side, inside the heating vent behind the couch, and then it comes up behind the couch right there, and then this wire, is actually going to tuck up in here when I get done so you won't see it. So the only portion of wire that you're gonna see is that right there. And it remains to be seen whether we need to cover that or not. But it goes up here to our main uh, data center and the white wire is the feed to the other one. So let's, uh, let's start packing up here. One more quick thing. Um, we still have a, a little bit of work to do on this because as is, this will clear the radio without any problems there. However, uh, if we put the cover on it, now it will not. It hangs up, hangs up right there. So the solution is we're going to have to come in and trim just about an eighth of an inch off of this. I'll use a hand plane to do that and then we'll stain it back to, to match. But we're going to call that a success. Mm -hmm.